Tuesday. That feels weird. I had to practice a couple times before getting started. Uh, today is part two of my two-part lymphedema awareness month uh, highlight on this condition that affects many of you. Yesterday we talked specifically more about managing symptoms getting that lymph moving, uh, depending on where you're at physically. But I do recognize that if you are dealing with uh, lymphedema, you probably have other goals just like regular people. Uh, just a reminder, you are not your condition. Uh, you are not your symptom. There's lots of different reasons we find ourselves in the situations that we are in with our health. Uh, hi, Diana, nice to see you. And today I want to talk a little bit more specifically um, about fitness and weight loss. If you are dealing with lymphedema, um, and sometimes lymphedema isn't the only thing that you're dealing with, as we know, uh, sometimes it's secondary to something else that you're dealing with. Uh, if you're in a very severe uh, set of symptoms and, and in a very poor uh, place in your health, more often than not, there's more than just lymphedema going on. And as our health digresses and things hurt and, and you know, we get further and further away from being in shape, that hill just seems harder to climb. So what I wanted to do today, um, there's been some heated discussions in a few pages. The, the way that I teach people how to use these machines is, is just a, a different approach. Um, but because I do deal with so many severe um, medical conditions and so many deconditioned people, uh, it's just a different approach. But anything we're doing today, although it does have the added uh, edge of trying to get that weight loss and that toning, getting more in shape. Uh, if you are joining me today, please let me know that you are and, and where you're joining me from. What I'd like to do is I, I promise you today five exercises, everything I do is is ridiculously simple uh i was not an exercise guru when i got into this and and i i have a very short attention span most people do so i like to do very high intensity short durations in my workouts uh, because many of you they're dealing with symptoms i encourage you to use your machine frequently throughout the day for the self-care piece but for the fitness uh th there's a, a little bit more that is entailed and the reasons that you may want to be looking at this for the weight loss, the, the toning, better fitness is also going to give you other benefits like better bone density. You're going to become stronger. Uh, there's going to be other benefits because of the type of exercises we're doing. So who's joining me? I've got someone here from Boise, from Louisville. Um, we need to talk. My son wants to come to a rock concert in that city next summer and, and I'm in Canada. So I'm, I, I got to find out some info about that. Uh, again, Diana, thank you for joining me. Uh, many of you are coming up as Facebook user, which is completely fine. What I'll do once we get through my little spiel and my little five moves is I'll come back and we're going to uh, ask, ask your questions, even though you're all dealing with lymphedema. Um, if you're just joining me, I want to say this again. You are not your condition. You are not your symptom. You're all individual people. And these are just things you're dealing with. Don't allow yourself to be a label and put into some box because I've been doing this too long with these machines that, you know, sometimes you read this or sometimes you heard that and we're all individual. We're all unique. Even those of you dealing with lymphedema, you've got different lifestyles, you've got different diets, you've got, you know, different households. So uh, one approach to fitness and one approach to food is, is never going to work for everybody. But the five moves I give you today should be something anyone can do on the machine if you are physically able. We are going to be getting down on the ground for the second portion of the routine today. So if you're not there yet, you're not in a getting down on the ground is not the hard part. It's the getting back up off the ground. That's always the bigger challenge. So if you're not quite there yet and you haven't seen yesterday's episode, um, watch yesterday's session. I, I got into a little bit more variation from a seated standpoint. Today, we're dropping the chair and we're going to start seated. If you are joining me for the first time on a vibration plate, um, I encourage you not to join me for the full time. Sometimes, um, you know, it's only a, a five, 10 minute thing, but it, it is an accelerated effect. So exercise positions that you perform on a vibration plate, which I refer to as an environment, it accelerates the benefits of the exercise position that you're doing. It dramatically reduces the impact uh, on the joints. All these little micro movements that the plates create in, in different ways, depending on the type of motion, 
But all these little micro movements create the muscles to do their job and hold you upright in their in this position, just like it would on the floor. But the little micro movements is is where the extra benefits come in. You're getting more length, more circulation. Your body's stabilizing itself on this surface that's moving a little bit. So there's there's different reasons that you get other benefits for this simply by standing on the plate. So um, very for those of you that might be joining me for the first time and, and you're fit and, and you're able to stand, the biggest less I can give you, all of my sessions are an oscillating. Oscillating movement is the foundational movement of vibration plates. It's where it's all started. It mimics that motion of walking. There's many other variations out there. Some of you with, with the, the Rumblex models or the turbos, the Hovarts, you, you've got other functions. But because oscillating is, is the one foundational movement that all of this came with, it's got the most history, the most research, it's also the one movement that all of Life Pro's models have. So any of the benefits that I talk about using vibration plates are pretty much associated with every vibration machine that you'll see me on, certainly all of Life Pro's. It's the positions, the durations, and, and quite honestly, guys, being realistic with where you are starting physically, it's not a setting. It's not a number. It's not a program. You don't walk into the gym and stand in front of five trainers and say, okay, I want to lift weights uh, to lose 50 pounds. How much should I use? They're gonna, all of them are going to look at you and say, well, it depends. And within those five different trainers, they're all going to have different ways. You know, maybe this trainer likes to lift lots of weights and just do a couple of reps or maybe maybe this trainer likes to do lots of reps with less weights and incorporates a treadmill and so you know using a tool as as, as a strategy in, in achieving your overall fitness goals is is just a tool this tool has an advantage over any other fitness tool out there yes i'm biased because it's kinder on your body for those of you dealing with lymphedema today's topic you know you've been through enough you're not dealing with a, a fit body or you wouldn't be listening to me ramble today and, and maybe you're fit but you're dealing with some severe symptoms so i want to show you how to use this plate for fitness and know that any of the fitness positions you're doing you're getting any of the benefits that i talked about yesterday because you're doing them on this surface that brings additional circulation additional lymphatic movement destabilization all these little micro movements there's, there's more occurring during the course of that exercise and for those of you that are dealing with arthritic joints swollen joints pain inflammation all those other symptoms that come with this um you don't need to move in any of the positions i'm doing today you can hold a static position if you don't exercise for purpose now i prefer you would hold a static position because i want you to improve your technique and and make sure that you're good and solid on this plate before you start moving yourself around so we're going to turn our plates on in manual mode, or if you prefer to use an oscillating preset program, uh, use one in the middle ranges. I always recommend working with a mid speed. Um, as a new user, that's just the way I like to introduce you. Or if you're dealing with chronic conditions, faster speeds are going to be a little smoother. They're going to be a little less choppy. And if you're, like I say, dealing with, with symptoms of pain, inflammation, we don't want to aggravate and push the joints. The other thing that's very important is amplitude or intensity. If you stand really, really wide and you're on that jogging marker, you're jogging. Jogging is higher impact than walking. So if you haven't been for a jog in 10 years, you need to bring your feet closer to the center and start understanding how your plate works and how you can customize these two factors. There's two factors. It's not just speed or frequency or the program. If there's oscillating movement, you have the additional benefit, and it is a huge advantage with this style of movement. You're always in control. So I'm going to put it on the slowest speed to illustrate this point. If you're really wide and you're standing really tall, you're getting the most impact. You're standing really tall, so all the movement is traveling upwards in your body. If you bend just slightly, see the difference in my voice alone? It suppresses that vibration lower into the body. And we go from being feel good and passive use to fitness. But for most of the people I'm talking about today, if you're dealing with severe pain, lymph, you're in a post-surgery situation, I don't want you jogging yet. Bring your feet closer. More like hip width apart. Be functional. And even though we're doing fitness stuff today, I want you, um, you know, gaining an understanding of how to use this and progress forward also with your fitness. So I want you 
no more than hip width apart. And I would prefer, the reason I want you bringing your feet closer, I want you going faster, guys. Try changing how you use your plates and understand what all these speeds and all these little subtleties that I nag you about feel like. So with the feet at a, at a mid position on your plate, I'm on the mini today. Um, this one goes 99 speeds. I'm at about speed 50. I would like you if you're on a rumblex in that 30 range. So if you're standing wide and you haven't gone faster because it's too scary, two things you control. So bring your feet closer and speed it up a bit just to see how it feels, especially if you're dealing with chronic issues. If you're dealing with fatigue and weakness and you want to start working out with me today, I need to find ways to get you fatigued faster because you've only got so much energy. Um, but I also want you to know that short bursts of use on this machine will give you energy. So you don't want to do a big, long, drawn out workout. So any of the positions I'm doing today on the machine, and we're going to start now and I'm going to stop talking. We're going to do a little warm up to start. Any of these positions I ideally want you done in 30 seconds to one minute. And I'll explain when we get to the meaner stuff. As a very quick warm up, let's just do some pelvic tilts. Pelvic tilts are not this. I covered this yesterday, but just that hips moving forward, backward, little circles, whatever you want to do. I just want to loosen up this area because we're going to be making it work a little bit harder. Uh, you can also... Um, because we're, we're working on lymphatic issues today, any additional movement that you feel comfortable doing on the plate, you know, is, is going to add movement. So get those upper arms moving, get some tunes going and rock to the beat. Uh, I just want to get some movement, loosen up, the, especially if you've been sitting and this is towards the end of your day. Um, a really good one, if you have been sitting, I did it yesterday as well, is a standing cat cow. So you're just kind of arching up like a cat. Tucking that bum in and then come the other way. Like you're trying to touch the back of your head to your tailbone. The better your range of motion in your core, the, the more you're going to be able to get up and down off the ground. I'm trying to trick you into getting motor, better mobility. Okay, so our first exercise. If you learn one exercise today and you practice it and you become very good at it, you can lose substantial amounts of weight. Uh, if you're not aware just by bending a little bit deeper, like you're getting ready to sit in a chair, okay? If, if the mobility's not there and you do fatigue, you may want to have a chair there so you have something to sit down on, give yourself a break, um, mix up your standing and your sitting. But by bending lower, we're forcing those, those big groups of muscles in the quads and the glutes to now support the equation of holding us up on this moving platform. And they're going to work harder. The bigger muscle groups are going to burn more calories, they're going to elevate your metabolism. So if you can do your, your work, especially your legs early in the day, it's going to elevate that, that metabolism and, and those idle calories that you use throughout the course of your tasks are going to take a few more out of the calorie bank because you've elevated your metabolism. If you have troublesome knees, hips, ankles, bad joints, holding still is, is sometimes a better way to, to fatigue the muscles without having to use and move the joints more than necessary. But the nature of this is, is that you should be dying within 30 seconds to a minute. If you're not, you can probably push yourself a little harder. So whether you've got more range of motion and you've been doing squats for a while and you're just trying to trick me, you know, maybe you can go a little bit deeper. Maybe you're doing squats regularly uh, and you need to add some weights to the equation. You know, adding more mass to your frame is another way to make the muscles not only work harder and burn more calories, but it's a way to get you to fatigue faster. And that's a really important thing that you can learn to do on your machine uh, to, to reduce the amount of time. I, you know, some trainers might disagree with me, but I don't care how long it takes you to get to fatigue, but getting those muscles to a point of I'm done is, is where we want to be. I don't want you, you know, I can do this for 10 minutes all day long. You, you, you've become conditioned. If you want to progress and if you truly want to lose some weight and get better health overall and get that cardiac up a bit, get the cardio function going a bit, you're going to need to push yourself. So another little tip while you're doing that mean squat, okay, in between the legs, we have a tendency to do things like this because our body's always trying to find a way to make it easier. And many of you, if you have had, especially in the legs, you know, maybe one leg's affected more than the other, we tend to have deficiencies. And on the machine, we do things like this where we favor and stand on the good leg or 
or, you know, maybe that the bad leg is, is, is fatigued. And, and, you know, so you want to try and make sure you're keeping a good position. This is going to make you fatigue faster because instead of just being these muscles, by adding something just above the knees, I'm using the smallest size of the, of the swirl yoga rings that, that life pro sells. You can also just use a ball. If, if you don't have, I prefer this, but it kind of, especially if you're dealing with prolapse or things like that. So this is going to now force the inner and the outer muscles to become part of the equation. So add this just above the knees, same squat we were just doing, whatever your range of motion is, and just hold still and make sure the knees aren't passing the toes. You want about 70 to 80% of your mass on your heels. Um, if you feel it more in the shins or you, you feel like you're doing this kind of thing, the body's really lazy. It's always going to find an easier way to get from point A to B. And one of the things it tries to do is shift the weight to the toes. If you just do that slightly, you'll feel it's not as hard. The heel is the point of contact. So if that lifts or too much of the weight leans forward under the balls of the feet, the move becomes easier and your body knows that. So squat deep, shoulders are back, nice good core. And this is just something else to kind of keep you in alignment and you'll feel those inner quads and, and outer thighs burning. That's a good a little add on if you're trying to increase hip strength as well. Okay, so the squat, okay? If you truly wanna lose weight and you're not an exercise person and you have no desire to do more exercises at this point, the best way that you can lose weight is by being honest with yourself. You don't need a whole program. We think we do, or we go, you know, I can't find the right program. No more excuses. If you're looking to lose weight and you've got a vibration plate, that one position, practice it and, and do it multiple times a day. That one position is that effective, not only in weight loss, but it's going to, I say, long-term boost the bones. It's going to give you strength. And the lower that you can start working on your range, the easier it's going to be to get down to the ground and get back up. It's just a deep, deep squat. So I, I want you guys to be successful. I'm not here to sell you a program or a workout routine. I want you to be successful using the tools that you have or to stop being fearful of them because, you know, you killed yourself because you did all these workout moves and you couldn't walk for two days. Okay, so the whole time we're doing these things, the lymph is surging, the, the circulation is surging. We're also treating and managing the symptoms, okay? So the next one I want to move to is a little more specific to get the lung function boosting a little bit. We're going to do some step ups. Slowly. I know if you have bad knees or bad hips that stairs are your best friend in the whole world. Um, if you're not super stable um, and, and you're worried, you know, you have trouble going down the stairs, you may want to put a chair or put this by a kitchen island, something where you've got something to hang on to. But all we're going to do is we're going to step up, knees slightly bent, and back down, okay? Depending on where you are at in your level of health, in your energy levels, you know, you might be able to only do this for 15 seconds. You might only be able to do it two or three times. Start your baseline and progress from there. Ideally, I would love to see this be 30 seconds to a minute, like any of the exercises we're doing today. So if you're finding at this point, you know, this one's really boring, Deb, and I want for more challenge, then pick up your pace. Pick up your pace, grab some weights, add some upper body movement, some disco moves, whatever you want to do. You have to be honest with where you're physically at. You know, I don't want you calling me in six months and say I didn't lose six pounds because I did it for a minute like you told me. You know whether you're working. You know whether you're applying yourself. And if you truly want to lose 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds, there's going to need to be a change in your activities and in what you're, you're giving your body to sustain those activities, the food, the rest. So if the activities are hard, this is where the plate is such a miracle tool. It makes them more effective. You don't have to exercise for two, three hours every day, but you do need to get that lymphatic system moving. The better it can get moving, the more you're going to feel better, the more you're going to have energy to do these types of exercises. So the warm up we started before we get down on the ground, we did some pelvic tilts, some movement. I just want you to do 30 seconds to a minute. Get moving. I challenge each of you, if you've been using your plate for a while, there's no right or wrong. There's just different ways. But bring your feet more like hip width apart. Don't think you have to be wide, especially if you've been sore after your workouts. Or The whole point of a vibration machine is that 
it brings more benefits. And one of those benefits is recovery. So if you're really, really sore the next day, you've way overdone something, whether that's time, whether that's feet too wide, whether you're fighting it the whole time, but try being functional with your fitness. If you're not exercising regularly now, no more than hip width apart and try it with a mid speed. That same lesson is going to go down right now. For those of you that are able to join me, bringing it down on the ground. And we're going to do what I call a modified push-up. So the reason I want to get you down on the ground is many of you, especially my ladies that have had lymphatic uh, trauma in the upper body, you know, maybe you're missing some nodes, you've had surgery. Uh, as women, we tend to do less upper body to begin with unless it's tank top season. So I, I want you to start gaining some strength, some, some better tone, but at the same time while you're doing these exercises, you're giving your body the additional boost of that lymph and that circulation because you're incorporating these exercises on the environment of the plate. So just like when you're standing, slow speeds are very choppy, very wobbly, very BOSU ball. Uh, they're not, in my opinion, the best starting point, especially for upper body where everything just shakes. So bring your machine up to a mid range. And just like when we're standing, bring the hands closer, reduce the amount of movement and, and offer yourself a little more speed. So I'm just on my knees in front of this. Uh, if you're fearful, if you're not doing push-ups now, <coughs> see how effective it is? You, you may just want to get a little bit of a feel for it I'm, by leaning off the machine. I'm feeling it up to, you know, the forearms, up into the elbows, but I'm not putting a whole lot of body weight into it. So the best way to hit this one, if knees are okay, if knees are not okay, get a yoga mat or something down on the ground. My whole floor is foam, so it's kind of cushioned wherever I go. And I want you leaning back slightly, and then I want you elbows are slightly bent, your hands are no wider than your shoulders. You don't need to be wider than your shoulders. Put the hands right underneath the shoulders and, and not your head. If your head is looking at your hands, you're going to get the most head shake. So instead of looking at your hands, push forward so that your shoulders are above your hands on the plate. And you're going to get more into those lymph nodes in the arms around the, the, the shoulders. You can, uh, if you push forward slightly a bit more, you're going to feel it in between the shoulder blades, the low back, even right out of that bra strap. Elbows are slightly bent. And, you know, on the knees, this is very much therapeutic. I want you to be comfortable. I want you to play and start getting some relief if you haven't been doing upper body yet. Um, if you're doing upper body exercises on the floor, and this is, to say the least, not challenging. Well, again, you know what you can do. If you're doing push-ups that look like this, then you should have the technique and the endurance and the strength to do what I'm doing. Uh, this is more for those of you that aspire to do these moves and then want to progress, but I want to give you some lymph and, and some strength at the same time, but you've got to walk before you run. So the next progression from here would be slowly just starting to back the knees up. Again, push the body forward, unbending at the torso so those shoulders are above the, the hands and your body's getting longer. We're opening up the core more, so we're getting heavier. Next progression would be full body weight. Now, for those of you that are doing this now, if you'd like to do, you know, dynamic movements, you know, there's just as many variations of, in a push-up as there is a plank. But the reason I like this position, um, not only to encourage you to start doing uh, from a strength and a fitness perspective, but it's a really good way to, to get more direct into those lymph channels, the areas that you may be struggling with. And, you know, maybe you're just looking th for therapeutic relief. This is a good way uh, without putting a whole lot of body weight into it, uh, without having to have a whole lot of intensity. If you find, because I get this a lot, it's really hard on my wrists. Debbie, I can't do push-ups because I, I can't, it hurts my wrists. All right. Yesterday, those of you that saw my roller demonstration, this is a pool noodle. So if you can't do the wrist thing, put on a pull noodle. So put your pull noodle on the plate and put your hands on the pull noodle and then you get a little bit better angle on the wrists. Okay. It's kind of therapeutic that way too. So there's always a workaround. 
Um, the last position, so we did a pelvic tilt and some upper body movement. Squats, squats, squats. I, I really hope that makes you hopeful and excited. You, know, you can do a whole bunch of different moves if you really like to, but if you truly want to start cutting the weight, the best place to start is just to work on those skirts, the squats and be consistent with them. Push yourself. Um, the very last one, you know, assuming you've pushed yourself, you're huffing and puffing, you're dying, you couldn't possibly do another uh, move if you tried, we would move on to the dessert, which is a seated massage. For those of you, before I do that, that find, you know, I, I could do more, Deb. You know, I'm not really dripping in sweat. And I, I, I prefer when you're first starting out, especially with the inflammation, the swelling, so many of the things we're dealing with here. If you liked what I did there, do another set. So start over again. You can skip the tilts, but then let's do more squats. Push it. You know, maybe you're doing two to three reps right at the time, or maybe you're doing this more like a circuit where, you know, we're doing the squat for 30 seconds to a minute. Then we're going to get down and we're going to do some push ups. You know, then we're going to get up and we're going to do some step ups. So, you know, turning this into your own little circuit training is a good way to do it. I really like the mentality. They call it hit style training, high intensity um, in intervals. So this one is four simple positions. I would prefer versus you going longer in your positions that you do more of them. So lots of short little reps or repeat them all if you want to work it into a circuit. So now we've done another whole set. Uh, we're all tired. We're done. We need to relax. So um, keeping lymphatic in mind and, you know, as you lose weight, whether you're dealing with lymphatic issues um, or, you know, maybe it's just swelling, you know, that the stuff's been sluggish for some time and we're starting to lose the inches and the skin is getting loose. Uh, direct massage positions are a good way to not only get some lymphatic movement and some recovery after your exercises, but it's a good way to target particular areas. So we're going to sit on the machine. I always put the buttons in front of me because sometimes I like to speed it up. Sometimes I like to slow it down. When you're standing, this is less shake. This is more shake. And it's funny. Once you actually get the ability to get down and start doing that with some of these positions, the tolerance is very different than when we're doing the work. This is a passive position. We're just sitting on the plate. Um, ideally, I prefer you sitting directly on the plate. If you add a stool, and I know some of you do or feel it's okay, what happens when you add a stool, instead of it moving, your, your, your hips, your pelvis is the axis, and, and that's the pivot point. But when you sit and raise yourself up off the, the platform with a, a step stool or a foot rest or something, you become the pivot point. And sometimes it's thrashing you more side to side than if you're able to just sit down on it directly. So this is something I'd like everybody to work towards. Today we're using this for the skin tone. We're getting more lymph, but this is also very good for urinary incontinence. This is great for constipation. So if that's a problem, it soon won't be if you keep using your plates regularly. For those of you that may be dealing with prolapse, um, you know, new mom issues, you know, you're weak in that area, you can add Kegels to any of these positions, but they, they work really well when you're sitting like this. So while we're sitting, we're feeling it. It's shaking me around. If, if I don't like it in the head so much, you know, we can lean forward a little bit. This one, you can go a minute or two. I know some of you do this for 10, 15 minutes straight, and that's fine. But today we're talking about weight loss and fitness and you don't need to do more and more. Anything more than a minute or two is really just feel good and more lymph. A way to add a little more upper body is to take those hands, palm down, tuck them under your legs, just at the top of the thighs before they hit the butt cheeks. And you'll feel quite a bit more direct in the arms. If you want a little bit more action, you know, kind of straighten up the arms and lean back into it. Play with your angles. You know, there, there's no harm in shaking the head, but if you're sending it there, don't fight it and resist it. Just let it move you. When you fight it and resist it, you become rigid. And that's when you start chattering your teeth and your, your hearing aids go flying and things like that. So just relax and focus on some breathing. Maybe you're doing some, some cat cows. Lean over, stretch it out, whatever feels good. Maybe you want to do some stretches. I really want to encourage you guys, the more that you can understand, you know, how you're in control with the speeds of your plate, and the position of your feet or hands, the more you can kind of ex experiment, you know, just by changing your angle a little bit in positions or shifting your weight this way. There's, there's no exact 
way to get from point A to B. And if you want to enjoy your experience and, and you know, you're, you're halfway through your life and you've never been an exercise guru, you're probably look, not looking for a big 10, 15 minute move program. Pick something that you're going to stick with consistently. That's where the results are going to come in. So practice that squat. If anything, um, I know Amber and I'm certain Roseanne have, have done a few sessions. Google how to do a good squat. If you're doing squats now on your board, get some variations that might challenge you a little bit more. But that one move is, is probably, of all the moves that you learn on a vibration machine, it's, it's the most crossover for lots of different benefits, um, but it's, it's also the most functional if you're recovering, you know, maybe you're recovering from a surgery situation or, you know, maybe you, you've got other conditions that are slowing you down. Use this plate to reduce exercise fatigue. Use this plate to reduce your the, the effort you have to put forth. And the whole time you're spending uh, time on it, like I say, you're surging that lymph and that circulation, which is really key with, with the conditions, um, not the conditions, the symptoms that you guys are dealing with in this group here. Okay. So I need to see who else is here and get to that's the questions part. And I'm blinding myself with all these lights that I've got here in my face. Okay. Um, hello from Salem, Oregon. Hello from Virginia Beach. Amen. Praise God. I would agree with that. Hello, Patricia from Fort Worth. Um, I, I think I said hello from Boise, uh, but I didn't talk about what you're bringing to me today. So you're dealing with fibro, lymphedema, lipedema, and lymphedema. I'm going to guess just by the way you spelt lipedema that you don't have an actual diagnosis. And thank you for, for if, if you did spell it that way on purpose, then, then I'm sorry. Uh, it's L-I-P-E. Uh, overseas, it's L-I-P-E, lipoedema. Uh, regardless, thank you for raising it because it brings up a very important point. Um, you know, conditions like lipedema, lymphedema, Durkheim's disease, fibro, MS, a lot of times there's synergies between what you're dealing with. And uh, one of the big things when you're dealing with some of these conditions is especially if they're uh, not well-known conditions like lipedema versus lymphedema, they get mixed up all the time. Uh, then you throw that in this vibration plate that half the doctors haven't heard of. You want to make sure that, um, you know, you recognize even if you do have a diagnosis, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get access to better care. And it certainly doesn't mean that someone's going to do the care for you. So for the vibration machine stuff that I showed you today, um, nobody's going to come to your house and make you do it. Um, you know, if you set a reminder, you know, me and Roseanne and, and uh, Amber certainly try, uh, but you've got to step up to the plate, not to sound cheesy, and, and you've got to put in the time. So just by being consistent, that lymph is going to improve. The symptoms are going to improve. And, and if today was over the top for some of you and too challenging, if you're dealing coming from a severe chronic health situation, you can improve. But I want you to be realistic with what you can do and quit worrying so much about what you can't do. You are not your condition and you are not your symptoms. So if you're just starting seated in a chair, then that's where you're starting. You know, you can progress um, very quickly, if, if you just commit some regular time to self-care and self-care might be two to three minutes, five times today, 10 times today, the self-care pieces is more about making you move and feel better. And, and eventually you'll want to get to things like this. For those of you that maybe found today a little conservative or a little less challenging, uh, if you are in better health, remember that a vibration plate, it's just an environment that's going to give you that lymph and circulation in complement. So, you know, if, if you're doing exercise for purpose now, you got your moves that you like to do, your planks, your whatever they are. This is just an environment that makes them more effective. It helps you on the recovery piece and, and gives you these, these bonus, uh, you know, add-ons. So you don't need to do a bunch of extra time doing the self-care. You're getting that lymph and that circulation movement through throughout using the plate. Um, so what kind of questions do we have here? Uh, Anna, consistency is the key. Thank you. I'm going to start making t-shirts. I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but it really is, um, you know, it's one of those things, uh, some of those in my group that use these regularly, like they can't live without it. And, and, and if you have gone without it for, you know, a couple of weeks or, or a month and, and you've been using it to manage like chronic lymph, it's amazing how some of the other things, you know, you're so focused on the lymph and the swelling or, or, or the inflammation that you didn't realize it was helping you sleep better. It was helping you poop better. It was helping you digest better. So sometimes 
if you've been using a plate for a really, really long time regularly and you haven't changed what you've been doing, you do get to a point where you're maintaining to a degree. But I encourage you, you don't have to learn a whole bunch of new different moves all the time. That's the beauty of the speed ranges and the levels and the different programs. So instead of looking for a specific number, please just try my approach with a mid-speed range. I say range and closer feet. You know, mix it up a little bit. You can't go top speed and wide feet all the time. How do you progress from there? And and you'd probably, you know, flare up a few things in this community if that was your approach. So try and keep it short but sweet on the symptom management side. And if you feel like adding a squat or two and pushing yourself a little bit, you're still getting the lymph, but you're pushing yourself into that fitness realm and the weight loss without it being this big, complicated something else you have to do. I want this to be something you can do. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So everybody is brilliant and they have no questions for me today. No way. Well, if you're too shy or if I've rambled you to sleep, or if you have all the answers to what I've been talking about today, then I'm doing a good job so far. So um, if you do have any questions and you're watching this on a recorded basis, uh, we've had a fair bit of chat about this. Uh, It's a really common uh, term and it is Lymphedema Awareness Month. Um, Use it regularly uh, to manage your symptoms. There's no point in suffering when you've got a tool like this in the closet. Um, How many times a day? Depends on the goals. Uh, I don't know if you're just turning in, uh, but if you have been watching me all along, then, then you need to pay attention. Use it as often as you like. If it's for symptom management, it's two to three minutes. You know, if you're looking at fitness, you know, you probably, and you're actually pushing yourself and and putting some effort forth, you probably don't want to do it more than once a day. But if you're using it for symptom management, and especially if you're a new user, let your body tell you that you need energy or that, you know, you feel heavy and sluggish. So two to three minutes to boost the circulation, the lymph, get you more stable, uh, give you a little bit better balance. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with using that throughout the course of the day. What you will find if you're using it to treat symptoms frequently, you're not over time, the, the symptoms may not be as severe and you may not need to use it as often because the relief is going to start sticking around a little bit longer, if that makes sense. So um, if, if you're looking at using it for weight loss as well, then you need to do the work. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lie to you guys. You can't just stand there and expect the machine's going to do it all. I know that you're coming from a place of healing and I know that you're coming from, many of you are coming from a place of deficiency, but there's no program, there's no number, there's no diet that's going to get you out of this situation. You need to put in the work. I'm showing you how to do the work and get over and done with really, really quickly. That's the big, big bonus of it. You still got to do the work. And back in the day when I had to lose weight and all the doctors were telling me I'm just old and fat and I got to get this knee replacement, I couldn't do the durations and the impact of the exercises that I used to love doing. I couldn't do basketball. I couldn't do any of that. Um, But once I found the machines and kind of figured out what the heck I was doing on them, you know, work within, I don't have your name, Facebook user, but for the weight loss, for any of that stuff, you know, your body, you know, your limitations, please pay attention to those too. If you are dealing with things, but you know, you know, whether you're pushing those big quad muscles and you just want to get them to a point where you're firing them up once a day. And and it might only be 10, 15 seconds. It might be less, but it's getting them to the point where, okay, I'm done. And practice that one good move. I, I want you to keep it simple and, and, and it's easier to be consistent if it's just, you know, you go from your standing pose and squat for a little bit and burn. And maybe you do that two or three times. You'll be amazed how much just adding a little bit of effort in that one pose adds up to a lot of inches down the road. And keep me posted if that's a po- an approach you want to try. Keisha, okay, so if those were both your questions, you know, you're, you're kind of getting the, the wellness while you're doing any time on the plate. But if the goal is weight loss and you're short on time like me, I'm all about what can I get done in this minute? Can I add on bricks to my back and can I do my red light? And so I like combining things. I would suggest if you really want to pick things up and if you've been working with weights, anything you can do with your squats to get you to that point of fatigue within a minute uh, to keep the impact and the durations down um, is what I would recommend. If you're not doing them now or you haven't been doing squats regularly, be realistic, you know, probably more like 15 to 30 seconds if you're truly pushing yourself. Uh, and then just, you know, make sure you're kind of progressing from there, mixing up the speeds. But you don't need to do this for 20 minutes and kill yourself, girl. Please don't think that you do. I hope that helps. Um, 
who else here has questions for me? Who wants to challenge me? You may not. Um, I know that it's like spring break week. So many of you are probably on a beach. I'm still watching snow melt. So have a, a margarita for me. I see I've got someone else here from Virginia beach. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, what have I got? I've got a good comment here. Hello from Salem. I got the bone on bone left knee in the process of losing weight, lost 120 pounds using my round blocks for three, uh, plus for the three weeks. Look, good for you. Uh, I'm a bone on bone too. And sometimes there's, you know, they'd rather sell you a surgery or a pill for something like that. So with the bone on bone, you know, you could be a triathlete, but with, with a deficiency like that, don't take on more than you're ready. You're only three weeks in. If you start feeling the knees aching, the muscles, you know, you're tired, you may be overdoing it in time or distance. Make sure with knee or hip issues, um, you know, whether it's a new hip or you, you're just dealing with an arthritic knee or the bone on bone, keep those, those, those knees under your hips, not only because it's functional, but it's supporting your weight. And it's sometimes, you know, you prolapse and those knees are bending inward or outward because we're standing wider than we would naturally walk across the floor. So that's a good idea. And I, I, I did uh three weeks ago, I did a session on knees where I showed you all kinds of little tricks that you could do to massage and, and uh, some things with the roller. So anytime you guys are looking for ideas, cause there's quite a few sessions now over the past few years with the three of us showing you, and we all have different, you know, ways that we like to train and teach you. There's no one way across the finish line, guys. There's just different ideas for you to experiment with. So anytime you're looking for anything, go up into the search menu of the, of the Life Pro pages, whether you're on the main or the VIP. And, and if I say, hey, I did a session two weeks ago on knees, type Debbie with a Y. That's why it's easy to search my sessions. Debbie with a Y, knees. And, and you know, any, anything where it's Debbie and knees and the same thing will come up and you'll find the session. Just some ideas. And many of the things I suggest to you guys are what I call spot treatments. So maybe it's just one of the moves that you do when your body feels like crap or that old bum knees giving you or the swelling on the one leg or the one arm has increased. Let your body and those symptoms drive how often. So that's why it's so kind of hard for me to answer that completely, uh, Keisha. But yeah, um, just, just make sure that you listen to your body. It's going to give you those signals and, and give it a fix. You know, maybe you're going out to for your work day and you're okay right now, but by one, two o'clock, you know, you'll be paying for it. Do a couple minutes, be proactive before you head out the door or before you go to the shopping mall. There's, you're, you're, there's no limit to, to where you can incorporate this. And if you've done, overdone it in other activities and you know you're going to pay for it, a couple minutes after whatever else you've done is just going to help that lymph expedite, get things moving, stop them from getting stiff and sluggish and accumulating and, and causing you, you know, that sleepless night or achy leg pain when you're trying to eat your dinner. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, I will see you guys. Um, let me think it's Easter now. Um, but I think I still want to see you on Monday. I'm not sure. Uh, I might still bug you on Monday. Uh, I'll, I'll get up a session here uh, later this week. Uh, if I don't see you before Easter, have a fantastic, if you do celebrate uh, Easter uh, weekend, I know it's uh, spring break for many of you. We're not till next week here in Canada because I think they're hoping the sun will still come out where I'm at. Uh, otherwise, thank you for joining me. I hope today's been helpful. Do whatever it is that is working for you consistently. Don't stop just because your situation has improved. An ounce of prevention goes a long way as well. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a great rest of your week.